The rogue Chico de Salmor giant lizard was once present on a small islet near El Hierro in the Canary Islands. It disappeared around the 1930s through unsustainable collecting of animals for scientific institutions and commercial interests, as well as predation by feral cats and possibly herring gulls. Like all species of Japanese wood pigeons, the Ryukyu wood pigeon was very susceptible to habitat destruction. It required substantial areas of undisturbed subtropical forest to thrive. Aijima, for example, was largely deforested for settlement and agriculture even before scientific exploration began, which explains the absence of records from this island. The species was last recorded on Okinawa in 1904, probably succumbing to hunting. It disappeared after 1936 due to these small islands being completely deforested by settlement and construction activity prior to World War II. It was presumed to continue to exist on the outlying islands in the Okinawa group, but has never been found again. The Mukojima white eye, incorrectly known as the Mukojima honeyeater, is the extinct nominate subspecies of the Bonin white eye. It occurred on Mukojima in the northern group of the Ogasawara Islands. The last record were specimens taken in January 1930. It is uncertain when St. Kilda House mouses first arrived on the islands, but it is possible that they were unwittingly transported there during the Norse period. Isolated on the islands, the St. Kilda House mouse diverged from its relatives. It became larger than the mainland varieties. When the last St. Kildans were evacuated in 1930, the endemic house mouse became extinct very quickly, as it was associated strictly with human settlement. Some specimens exist in museums. The St. Kilda field mouse, a subspecies of the wood mouse, is still present. Penatomys nivalis was a medium-sized species without many distinctive adaptations. The nasal bones were short and blunt-ended. The zygomatic plate, a bony plate at the side of the skull, was broad. The bony palate was long and flat. The root of the lower incisor was housed in a bony protuberance, the capsular process. The molars were low-crowned and possess accessory crests such as mesolifs. The upper molars all had three roots. The Titicaca oristias was characterized by a unique pattern of pores on the head. Large thick scales lined the median dorsal ridge and thinner smaller scales surrounded the ridge. Between these two areas of skin were patches with no scales. The freshwater fish belonging to the genus oristias are found in high-altitude isolated lakes in the Altiplano region of South America, ranging from Peru to Chile. Lake Titicaca Human introduction of foreign fishes to the Altiplano basins predictably had negative consequences. The alien species created competition and preyed upon Titicaca oristias, eventually leading to its extinction. Pollutants contaminate the water and traces of metals, such as zinc and copper, have been found in the tissues of fishes. In addition, runoff from fertilizers and pesticides used in agricultural lands has been extremely toxic to the fish. The water from the Altiplano region is also in high demand. People have constantly been taking water out of the basins and depleting its habitats.
Lake Constance whitefish was a deep water whitefish that reached a length of 29 centimeters. It was highly sensitive to environmental changes and it is thought that the eutrophication of Lake Constance, which peaked in 1932, irreversibly affected the development of the eggs of the species. Surveys undertaken in the last 10 years failed to find any evidence of the survival of the Lake Constance whitefish. Heath hens lived in the scrubby heathland barrens of coastal North America. They were extremely common in their habitat during colonial times, but being a gallinaceous bird, they were hunted by settlers extensively for food. In fact, many have speculated that the pilgrim's first Thanksgiving dinner featured heath hens and not wild turkey. By the late 18th century, the heath hen had a reputation as poor man's food for being so cheap and plentiful. In 1927, only 11 males and 2 females remained despite being afforded the best protection according to contemporary science, that number had declined to a handful, all males, by the end of the year. Apparently only one male survived, he was last seen in 1932 early in the breeding season, and thus presumably died, about 8 years old, days or only hours afterwards from unknown causes. According to Aboriginal knowledge, the Lake Mackay hair wallaby was covered in soft, long, grey fur and had especially long fur covering the tops of its feet. It had a short, thick tail and hopped like a kangaroo. The Lake Mackay hair wallaby was comparable in size to a booty or rabbit. They were mostly said to only produce one offspring at a time, but a few people reported two. Important factors in the decline of hare wallabies were likely predation by foreign cats and foxes introduced to their habitat. The feral cat is suspected to have been one of the main predatory contributors to the decline of the species. In addition to predators, the introduction of rabbits to central Australia also strained the populations of Lake Mackay hare wallaby by creating competition over resources such as food and shelter. Salmo pilari is an extinct species of salmonid fish that inhabited a single lake in the Atlas Mountains of northern Morocco, at higher than 2,000 meters elevation. It went extinct in the 1930s, probably because of introduction of common carp in the lake. Only two individuals remain in museum collections. Desert rat kangaroo was solitary except for mothers with young offspring. It lived in nests built over shallow depressions in the ground. These nests were excavated or found and are crucial in the desert, where temperatures can be high, while relatively little brush or foliage is available for cover. It was mainly herbivorous, feeding on foliage and stems of desert vegetation, but has also been found to eat insects such as beetles and weevils. It was so independent of water, it even shunned the succulent plants of the sand hills. It was able to survive without any surface water while feeding on green plants. The desert rat kangaroo was discovered in the early 1840s. However, after these early sightings, it was no longer recorded for 90 years, and was widely believed to be extinct. This species, even before European colonization, was apparently never abundant.
the thylacine was relatively shy and nocturnal, with the general appearance of a medium to large-sized dog, except for its stiff tail and abdominal pouch similar to a kangaroo's, and dark transverse stripes that radiated from the top of its back, reminiscent of a tiger. The thylacine was a formidable apex predator, though exactly how large its prey animals were is disputed. Because of convergent evolution it displayed a form and adaptation similar to the tiger and wolf of the northern hemisphere, despite being unrelated. Its closest living relative is either the Tasmanian devil. It was one of only two marsupials to have a pouch in both sexes, the other is the water opossum. The pouch of the male thylacine served as a protective sheath covering the external reproductive organs. The thylacine had become extinct though the Australian mainland before British settlement of the continent, but it survived on the island of Tasmania along with several other endemic species, including the Tasmanian devil. Intensive hunting encouraged by bounties is generally blamed for its extinction, but other contributing factors may have been disease, the introduction of dogs, and human encroachment into its habitat. The animal had become extremely rare in the wild by the late 1920s. Despite the fact that the thylacine was believed by many to be responsible for attacks on sheep. The last known thylacine to be killed in the wild was shot in 1930 by a farmer from Mabana. The last captive thylacine, later referred to as, Benjamin, was trapped in 1933, and sent to the Hobart Zoo where it lived for three years. The thylacine died on September 1936. It is believed to have died as the result of neglect. Locked out of its sheltered sleeping quarters, it was exposed to a rare occurrence of extreme Tasmanian weather, extreme heat during the day and freezing temperatures at night. This thylacine features in the last known motion picture footage of a living specimen. Schomburg's deer inhabited swampy plains with long grass, cane, and shrubs in central Thailand, particularly in the Chow Freya River Valley near Bangkok. This deer avoided dense vegetation, this made them easy targets for hunters. Commercial production of rice for export began in the late 19th century in Thailand, leading to the loss of nearly all grassland and swamp areas on which this deer depended. Intensive hunting pressure at the turn of the century restricted the species further until it became extinct. The wild population of Schomburg's deer is thought to have died out because of overhunting by 1932, with the last captive individual being killed in 1938. Most of the known Bali tiger zoological specimens originated in western Bali, where mangrove forests, dunes and savanna vegetation existed. The main prey of the Bali tiger was likely Javan Rusa. At the end of the 19th century, palm plantations and irrigated rice fields were established foremost on Bali's rich volcanic northern slopes and the alluvial strip around the island. Tiger hunting started after the Dutch gained control over Bali. During the Dutch colonial period, Hunting trips were conducted by European sportsmen coming from Java, who had a romantic but disastrous Victorian hunting mentality and were equipped with high-powered rifles. The preferred method of hunting tigers was to catch them with a large, heavy steel foot trap hidden under bait, a goat or a muntjac, and then shoot them at close range. In 1941, the first game reserve, today's West Bali National Park, was established in western Bali, but too late to save Bali's tiger population from extinction. It was probably eliminated by the end of World War II. The Tulashe wallaby was a slim, graceful, and elegant creature that had a pale ashy brown pelt with a buff yellow underbelly. It was a nocturnal animal, foraging for vegetation during the twilight hours of the day. Their movements were unusual and extremely rapid, 
able to outpace almost any terrestrial predator, they were known to evade the fastest dogs of the colonial hunters. The Tulashe wallaby only survived 85 years after European occupation. In the 1920s, a conservation effort was made to try and bring the animal back from the brink of extinction. The plan was to capture and breed the last known surviving members of the species in captivity. This effort ended in disaster after 10 of the 14 of them were accidentally killed in the attempt to capture them. The last wild sightings were recorded in 1924, and the last known Tulashe wallaby survived in captivity until 1939.